And of course, the other big story that we've been following has been the very violent weekend that we saw here in the city of Toronto. And in fact, across the GTA, riddled with gun violence. So the bigger question is, why is this happening? And what can we do about it? There are a lot of questions. There really are no easy answers. So joining me now is Jamil Giovanni, who is Ontario's advocate for community opportunities and leader of Premier Ford's Council on Equity of Opportunity. Good morning to you, Jamil. Thank you for joining us again. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, I follow you on Twitter here, and uh, I was looking at your, your latest tweet, I guess, and, and one of the reasons why we are seeing this surge of gun violence, and, and why do you think that is? Well, there are so many factors. As you said, this is such a complicated issue, but one of the factors that I, I'm trying to help people better understand is how social media plays a role in this, because a lot of the instigation that leads to violence over the last few months occurred during a lockdown period where people weren't interacting with each other. So the question becomes, how were they instigating violence? What was escalating conflict? And a lot of it was social media interaction. It was uh, stuff happening on Instagram, on YouTube, on other platforms, where some of these young men were, were, were uh, escalating their conflicts with rivals and things are boiling over right now. It's one of multiple factors. It's certainly not the only thing going on, but it is an important part of understanding this surge of violence. The last time we chatted here on BT it was uh, what's to be done within communities because we look at police and we look at community members and how do they work together. Do you have an answer for that? Well, I think the way we have to think about this is there are long-term changes that are necessary, like fixing our broken education system. And then there are short-term actions that people need to be taking as well. So for me, the police are more of a short-term action. They're, they're needed in order to stabilize the current situation we face, but they're not going to be the source of a long-term solution. The short-term so solution that the police can provide is working with uh, people in the community, working with tech companies, working with different organizations to try to de-escalate tensions and violence. And a lot of the violence right now is centered around Toronto's hip hop community in particular. And I think the police have a role to play in trying to figure out what is going on in this subculture. It's a small number of people who are creating so much of the violence in the city. And I think the police have a role to play in trying to help us understand what exactly is going on in, in this subculture. Jamil, when you mentioned police, uh, of course, they've been at the center of a lot of discussion. Toronto City Council voting no to defund police, but looking at ways of uh, rejigging, I guess, funding uh, when it comes to community support and various organizations. Um, what, is your, what is your thought when it comes to people who are still saying we need to defund the police? Well, for the most part, I think people who say defund the police have good intentions. I think they really do want to help bring more social programs to uh, communities that need more social programs. But ultimately, to say defund the police with any degree of seriousness shows me that you're just out of touch with what's happening right now. Uh, you, 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 you have to recognize police are part of the short-term solution of creating safer communities. That's absolutely the case. And when you see gun violence increasing, that's not a time for us to take a thousand police officers, which is what uh, members of Toronto City Council want. They want to take a thousand police officers off the street. That's not going to help anyone. And that's really just playing politics. That's not trying to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. um, what can be done right away, do you think? Well, I think what we need to do is make sure that the, the, our responses are targeted to the young men who are actually at high risk of being victims of violence or participating in violence. So what that means is we need to make sure that when young men enter the justice system, they're properly supported when they're inside so that when they leave, we also can support them to transition their life into something different. And the young men who have made those changes, who have gone from being gangsters to now being fathers and contributors to their community, we need to empower those young men to be part of the solution. Because if you don't have credibility with this small group of young men who are involved in violence, then you're not going to be able to reach them. We need to empower those who have the credibility and have the relationships to make a difference. Yeah, some, uh, some great uh, words here. Uh, Jamil, thank you for your time. Uh, and uh, I'm sure we will chat again and hopefully under better circumstances where we're seeing progress. That would be important. Thank you. Thank you.